All right, welcome to the Mad Lab. Happy Halloween. What's going on? You look fucking better with the mask on. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep it on for like 10 seconds. Keep I can't even breathe with this hours. fucking thing on. Uh, we're back. We had no fights last week, but we did have a fight. We had a boxing fight, it if you want to call it a boxing <clears throat> fight. So I think we should start talking about... Take the fucking thing off. I can't take the, you serious. The, the, the putrid, <laughs> the putrid showing of the so-called top 20 heavyweight champs of the world. After our banter last week and after comments on social media about how, uh, you know, uh, how I'm a clown for even thinking that Tyson Fury is not a top 10. What the fuck do you got to say now about that? Because that performance was disgusting. I'll give Naganu credit because he took it very seriously. He came in there and- You got to give him, you got to, that's, the, that's the, the problem here. They think that we're shitting on on Fury when we're we are, we're shitting on Fury but we're we're great performance by for, for the first time fight look it's not yeah, like Nagano looked good you know what I mean but he fought he fought he came to fight he didn't gas he fought the right. whole 10 rounds but Fury man he looked horrible he looked like he didn't train for this fight he didn't take it seriously he got knocked down by a guy fighting his first boxing fight and you got people saying this guy I mean after watching that performance how do you not say that any boxer from the 90s, right? Anybody. Is better than a guy like Tyson Fury. And it goes to show well, you, I mean, come on, man. There's a cross hatch there, too, though. Okay. He didn't train for the fight. He looked That's what we think because he no, looked he like shit. He didn't train for that fight, bro. Even Garcia, every, every trainer out there, I watched all the things. I was like, what could possibly happen? Was he sick? Or They said the same thing. He didn't train, a, no matter what he says, dude, he didn't train a fucking day for that fight. So it, it sucks because the uneducated fan is, is sitting there going, oh, look what he just did to Tyson Fury. When that was Tyson Fury that I've, I've never seen before. But it also shows you that from Muhammad Ali, Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe, Razor Ruddick, these guys would get off the couch and be Yeah, I mean, come on, gone. man. You know what I mean? So it just provens our, 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 our stick on he's not a top 10 guy, bro. He's not a top 20 guy. Top t bro, you got to remember, you know, heavyweights were, they're not like the welterweights, bro. They don't have this huge variety. I mean, if you want to go all the way back to Jack Dempsey. No, but I'm saying like there's guys that never won the belt that are better than him. Yeah, but you can't go by that. Huh? You have to add that into the equation. You have to. I mean, you kind of have to. You know, put a guy like, 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 like Vladimir Klitschko, not, not Vitaly, his brother who never won the belt. Who was better than his brother mm -hmm. against Tyson Fury? Who wins that fight? Oh, uh, Vladimir. Of course, right? Dude, I can name a ton of people that would do. Listen, Nagano did not fight. Like, I mean, if you from a boxing perspective, he didn't fight good. No. Like, if that was a professional boxer going against a professional boxer, and like, like that was the thing, you'd be like, "What a shit fight that was." Here's what I don't get you about know? the whole thing. I don't know all these people saying the wrong guy won the fight. Okay, we all watched the fight. I had Nagano winning two rounds. He got a 10-8 for the round with the knockdown. Maybe three. Maybe three. Maybe, maybe. I think it was the the the, the second. What it was the second or third round we knocked him yeah. down. He gets two. He gets a 10-8 round there, yeah. and then he won the eighth round because he had a yeah. flurry at the end of the round. Yeah. But that was it. Yeah. The rest of the fight, I mean, Fury clearly outstruck him. Maybe they weren't hard shots, but you know, if if we had CompuBox like we used to have, and you could clearly see he outstruck him by plenty. Mm -hmm. You know well, what I mean? That was another thing. Guy comes on with verdict, like these new fans that you know verdict. Look at the verdict. I was like, bro, if you're going to sit here and have an uneducated argument with me about fucking verdict, and that's the way that's going to be a barometer scoring a fight. Listen, we got there's an well, old verdict saying. is that that, that yeah, thing with the, with the fans. Yeah. Come on, man. There's, a, there's an old saying: be careful what you wish for. And unfortunately, for decades we've been wishing for this, and we got what we wanted, and it backfired. We have been boxing and MMA guys for three decades. And the only thing we've ever wanted in this in these two sports was for it to get notoriety, for it to get bigger, for it to get better, for more people to get more eyes on it. Unfortunate, fortunately and unfortunately, we got that. We got a lot more eyes on MMA and boxing now. But unfortunately, it's a fucking nightmare because ninety I don't care, I don't give a shit who gets mad at this. Ninety percent of you have no idea what the fuck you're watching. You have no idea what you're fucking talking about. And this fight right here showed me exactly my my points on all this. Why I don't affiliate with all these people and stuff like that. When you have people coming out, bloody elbow, I'll call you out right now because I think you're site your shit. Ten people, they go, these are the ten people that thought Francis won the fight. 
they added Francis on the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, they added Francis on the list. They added Mike Tyson on the list. But who who would think that that he won that fight? Well, listen, my no, no, but, but, but saying this is like this is how they try to angle it. They had Francis. They added, they added the actual fighter to the list of who he thought won the fight. Mike Tyson to the list. They added um, Eddie Hearn, who hates him, literally hates him. Eubanks and, uh, and people who can't stand him because of his PED use. Um, three MMA fighters. Lennox Lewis, who said that Fury won the fight. And then they put in quote in parentheses implied. I got to be honest with you. Like, there's a reason why there's a lot of guys in combat sports that I'm that I know that are professional athletes that aren't on social media. And now I fucking know why because uh, half his years are fucking boneheaded. Have you guys to come after me and talk to me about it when I was one of the ones two decades ago that was signing fucking petitions in New York and New Jersey to legalize it in New York? I've written articles for boxing MMA before Ariel Hawani was even known. You could go back and see my articles from MMA fighting and stuff like that from way back in the fucking day. Like, I've been in, 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 engulfed in this fucking sport for 30-something years. So do I love that more f you guys, more fans have come in? Yes, but you have taken over and disrupted the actual beauty of the sport because you're talking things you don't know about. And what these outlets do, they feed into it. The Ariel Hawanis of the world. Ariel Hawanis on there, bro. And like, like you guys should be more intelligent than this. He hates Dana White. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. So he comes on his show. He's like, yeah, huh? He did, he made the wrong decision, huh? He made the wrong decision leaving the UFC. He's the king. He's the king of boxing. He won that fight. He's the number one pound for pound baddest man on the planet. Come on. Like, and think about all of Ariel Hawanis' followers. They're they're uneducated. Half of them are uneducated people that are like, you know what? He's right. He's right. So along goes the train. The new wave of MMA and boxing fans has ruined this two sports. I got to be honest with you. And that, but bro, even besides what we saw, how about be the pre-fight, the concerts, the music? It's ridiculous. This is why Showtime pulled out. This is why HBO pulled out a couple of years ago. Like, what happened to before the fight, talking about the fighters, the state of boxing, the division, the upcoming fights, what's going on, who's contenders, like the, the announcers, the commentators, like it's 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 turned into something that I, that I didn't grow up watching, that the sport I loved, and it makes me want to watch UFC a lot more. Yeah. And appreciate that sport well, a lot more. But the same thing with the it's UFC just not. It's, it's just same, like, it's what was that UFC. hour fucking concert going on and nothing to do with anything? Like, I don't know, man. It's just disappointing. And then uh, we thought this was going to be the end of it, that Fury would just wipe the floor with him, wipe the mat with him. And so now it, it backfires. Now, you, worse. now you're going to want more guys coming and doing the cross fighting to go make the money and, and thinking that they could beat these champs. Well, the Usyk fight is off. It's off? Yeah, they, they said no Usyk fight. Why? I personally think it's because they didn't think that he was going to be in this much of a dog fight to have it December 23rd. Because oh, he actually got a little beat up. That's six, eight weeks. Dude, he got his bell rung in, yeah. that, in that second or third round. So what I think the greatest thing that they can do for everybody, for boxing, for MMA, for the, the educated fans, for the educated fans, for the non-diehards, for the casuals, for the diehards, let them have the fucking rematch. And let Tyson Fury really train for the fucking fight this time. Like, now he knows. Like, look, I can't take this dude lightly. Like, and I don't think he took him. I, well, I, I do think he took him because I don't think he trained. And let him have the fucking rematch, bro. Like, just because otherwise we're just going to be going through this hamster wheel of, listen, guys, no MMA fighter is ever going to come into boxing. And no MMA fighter is ever going to be a professional, legit boxer on, on both of their best nights. Never going to happen. No boxer is going to go into MMA and beat an MMA fighter in the, in the cage. Never going to happen. But you don't see boxing going in there and challenging them all the time. You don't see. The only person who did it, and I do think he has a chance to beat him, Shakur Stevenson challenged O'Malley to an MMA match. I do think Shakur Stevenson can beat him. I do. I really, really, really do. I doubt it. Shakur Stevenson? I doubt it. O'Malley's not a grappler, dude. Miles is strike. Miles is gonna stand up to you. You, you think he, he still can... has grappling? I don't think. You so. know what I mean? I don't think he would even attempt it. These guys aren't gonna get up once they go down. No, I agree. They, they, I, I agree one hundred percent. They're not gonna get up. But I'm saying that's the kind of matchup. That's the only kind of matchup I would. Want I don't to even see. think that would happen. Bro. No, no. But I'm saying he challenged them. You know what I mean? So what a fucking joke. But these guys don't come in. Boxers don't go into MMA say I'll beat you. They've done it a few times. Ray Mercer did it. I remember I was there. I was front where I was watching it. Yeah, low level stuff though. Low level stuff though. I mean, this is ridiculous, guys. Like for you guys to even imply that you really believe the fact of the matter is he didn't win the fight. Fights are not scored in the culmination of the big picture. 
Fights are scored in segments. That's how you score a fight. Now, I know people who are into MMA, like me and him, and f three and five rounds. Damage. And it's different. It, it, it could be, and it could also be a little bit easier to score. When you're dealing with 10 to 12 rounds, you've got to score them in 10 pockets to 12 pockets. It doesn't matter that the rounds are close. It doesn't matter that somebody knocks somebody down in the third round or the fourth round or the fifth round. It matters if who won each round. Yeah, round by round. The reason why Nungano lost that fight was because he's not a boxer. Any boxer would have stole those rounds. Right, right at the end of the fight. Yeah, he sure. He knew how to stole, steal those yeah. rounds. He yeah. d does not know how to steal a round. He doesn't know ring generalship. Great performance. Feather in his cap. I give him all the flowers. I hope he makes a ton of money, and I want to see him box again. He didn't win the fucking fight. No. So period in. So that's all I got to say about that. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> uh, talk small NFL. Chase Young to the 49ers. What a fucking bro. What a day for you. I know. God. What a day for you. I, I'll tell you one thing, though. Why did they go after like a D-back or so, a cornerback or something? I don't know, man. Jaylen, they got what is it called? Was, uh, just went to... Um... Jalen who? Not Ramsey. No. Uh, they signed uh, they, a big, big cornerback. Uh, uh, just went somewhere. I forget where else. I was. I thought maybe the Niners were signing, but Chase Young, dude. I don't know. I, wow. I don't know how they did that. Wow. Third round, third round pick. Wow. Well, they wanted to dump his salary. I'm sure or something like that. But wow, man, that is huge for the Niners, huge bro. Pick for the Niners, we had a good week uh, uh, over at the cartel. I went up about six. Yeah, units. he's on a hot streak right we now. Went up around three units. Yeah collectively like the whole squad we're up like uh 10 units or something like that so good overall week we're hoping now we can roll it into mma we got uh we got back to the fight saturday night uh we got a main event here we'll start at the top jalton almeida Derek lewis the black beast we all know what Derek Lewis brings to the table, right? You never bet against him because all it takes is one, a knock you out, put your lights out, make you unconscious. But Derek Lewis has not been the same, you know, over the past, uh, I don't know, five, six, eight, nine fights. Um, you know, Jonathan Ameda is a kid that wasn't getting enough press and now his name is coming out there they're looking at this kid as a contender in the heavyweight division when there's not a lot of contenders out there right now and now with john jones getting hurt and stipe being old i mean you got you got uh um uh what's his name you got pavlovich and uh and what's the guy's name from from, from england fighting for for the intern belt Aspinall. too Aspinall for yeah. now i like both those guys right but almeida is is as talented right up there with Natural those guys too. Light heavy too yeah and, 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 and with the state the way the thing is I mean, if Almeida gets by Lewis, which is a monster favorite here, he might get a shot sooner than later. Maybe the next shot or maybe two fights from now. The guy's not the biggest guy for the but he's growing into his body. He's young. He's been dominant. He's got all-around good game. I like this kid. I like watching him fight. I think Lewis is way over past his prime, but it's just scary to lay, you know, minus 45 against Jalton, you know, on Jalton Almeida, knowing Derek Lewis has the most, the most thunderous, may, maybe next to Nagano, that he has that weird it's a different kind it's of like a thug. it's a different kind of power that he has there so never count him out in any fight but I like this kid Almeida I think uh, I, I, I think maybe he subs Derek Lewis yeah. I think he hurts him, like, maybe like hurts him with a couple of body shots. He kills over, gets on his back, and uh, and submits him. So I'm going to call Almeida by uh, by submission. Yeah, you know, I was toying around with that, the submission prop. And I was thinking to myself, though, Lewis is the type of guy, he reminds me of this guy I used to grapple with, Gary Miller. And now Gary Miller is in the uh, strongman competition on the, in the Arnold. He's a big, massy, thick guy. And I remember I could never fucking submit him, bro. Because like, when his you neck... Well, no, you wrap your arms around them, and they they're, 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 they have like the ability. Their body like swells. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like how you would lose your grip or, or, or whatever. But so that's why I look at Lewis. That's why submitting him only two times in his career. That's basically what that is. You know what I mean? He beats guys that he shouldn't beat. Yeah, like, like when he beat Volkov, when he beat Volkov, Volkov yep. was beating him from fucking pillar to post. Yeah, and then with ten seconds left, he knocks him out. Like Blades, it just takes one shot. Blades was a heavy favorite on that guy. fight. Yeah, just takes one shot with Lewis. He's thirty eight years old, but the last thing to go on you genetically is your power. Your power is always the last thing to go, and obviously that's his his best attribute. Almeida's a lot younger, faster, good grappling. His power is not like Lewis, but he's got good power. But the majority of his fights are one round. Like, one round and out. You know what I mean? So, like, what happens if he gets put on Queer Street, you know, for, for a minute or two? Like, what happens if Lewis ends up maybe reversing position on the way down? He goes for a takedown, and he's a little too heavy, and Lewis falls on top of him. What happens then? You know what I mean? So, there is situations that scare me with this fight, but when you look at Lewis and you look at what his, his, his weaknesses are, his body is genetically just pro susceptible to being damaged. 
you know, you can hit this guy one time with a teep kick or something, and he's keeling over, and he has no poker face. Derek Lewis has no ability to hold a poker face. You know, so once once you hit him and hurt him, he shows it. He doesn't really hold his cards well. You got to go with Almeida here, but I would not tie him into anything. Nah, it's scary. Like, it's very scary. I think it's a great test for him. You know? I think it's a perfect short test Short notice, for him. but like people are saying, short notice, but Derek Lewis don't need a long notice. He's not that no. kind of fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to come in, he's going to swing, and knock out, and that's it. He's not going to throw a lot of shots, low output. That's it. It's, looking for the big one. Yeah, so that's, that's all he's going to do. So, I, I'm picking Almeida here. I, you know, it's definitely not going to the cards. Minus 3,000 to go to the distance. Minus 3,000. Wow. Yeah. So, it's definitely not going to the cards, but... Yeah, I can't see it going to the cards. No, on no, but I, I can't. I can't comfortably lay that kind of wood on, against that close. Yeah, no, you know? no, I agree. All right, now we got the next fight. We got the Bonfin brothers both fighting on this card. This is Gabriel Bonfin, undefeated, very impressive. Um, you know, he's a submission guy. All first round finishes in round one in the U under the UFC banner. You got Nicholas Dalby, man, who's a tough, tough guy. Never been finished before. You know, he's, he's looked good. He's came back focused. He's durable. And he fights up and down to his competition. This is a tricky fight, man. I, I, I You know, you don't see a lot of guys that end their career or, or stay undefeated. It rarely happens. And Khabib is one of the very yeah. few. You can't really name anybody else who ended his career undefeated. And uh, Joey Calzaghe. Boxing Not Joey man. Calzaghe. Yeah, he retired a little early, but man. He's underrated, dude. He was in his prime. He could have fought a couple more tough fights. He never fought Andre Ward, and they were trying to make that fight happen at That's that time. Boy. That was my boy at that time. They were trying to make it happen, and he, he retired before that. He was young. He was like yeah, 35. Yeah, he, was he was in his prime. But, uh, but man, this is like... You know, I, I don't know how Dalby could be a plus 455 in this fight. It makes no sense. You know, and and, uh, and honestly, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Are you really? I'm taking a swing at the big dog Dalby at plus 455. Bonfim's impressive, uh, but Dalby being so durable, like I said, fighting up to his level of competition, never been finished before. I think he gives him a hard time, and I don't know why. I'm going with my gut here. I'm going to take a huge upset here with Nicholas Dalby, give Bonfim his first loss. I don't get this line, dude. I don't get it. I mean, I listen... Before I even seen which Bonfin it was, it was like I, I literally was like, wait a minute, I'll be mine, you know, plus whatever. When you look at his career, this is a guy who this is his second stint in the UFC. His first stint, he was uh, he went like zero and three. They booted him. He went back, and usually now when you get booted from the UFC, you'll go back on a regional circuit. You'll make a couple bucks. You'll maybe fit, fix a couple things, and and that'll be that. This guy. Completely did a 180 on his on his career. Like yeah. he left there, he took it seriously. He went on the regional circuit. He went on a tear. Came back to the UFC for his second stint. Went from 0 and three or one and three to five one and one. And, and look who he's beat too: and Silva, Alves, yeah. Salikov. Like they, yeah. they, they, this is tough competition yeah, he's too. Beat good guys. He's beat good guys. And he's very. And he was a dog in the Salikov fight too. Very durable. He's got good cardio. He pushes a good pace. He fights up or down to the level of his opposition. So, like, he'll fight a lower-grade guy, it'll be a close fight. He'll fight an upper-grade guy, it'll be a close fight. Like, just the way he fights. Yeah. You know, Bonfin is good, but he's still kind of unproven. I mean, if you look at him, all first-round finishes in the UFC uh, in, in under uh, all under a round. I mean, so, like, you haven't really seen him in distance. You haven't really seen you, We've seen him in the bay, but we have never seen him in the ocean. You know what I mean? And Dalby's that type of guy. I'm going to go Bonfin here. I think that if the, if if... If there's ever a time that Dalby's going to get a f get finished, it would probably be in this fight against Dalby by this by some kind. What of do you submission. think if he, if Dalby stuffs the takedowns? But that's what I'm saying. Gets this into like I don't trust it. Gets this late. Gets us into the third round. This guy comes on strong at the end. We haven't seen this guy out of the first round. It's one of those tricky I'm, fights, I'm gonna man. Go, I'm going to go with Bonfim just for sheer. One thing about Dalby is he's not a coordinator or athletic guy at all. Yeah, he's just like a da, 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 like he kind of ticks forward. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Bonfin's kind of athletic, bro. He's got sick, slick grappling. He's got good transitions. Like, I think he's going to find spots to win this fight, but I would not be shocked if this fight goes to the cards. I think Dobby's a live dog here. I think he's live. I, I, think, I, I'm, I think he's I'm, a lot I'm, more live than his I'm, price. I'm picking him to win this fight uh, here. I'm going to go. Long shot. I'm going to go Bonfin by decision. I'm I, going the other way, Dobby by decision you, or by a late finish in the third round. All right. I, I, I don't hate it. Honestly, if I was toying around with taking Dobby in the beginning, but I, I just. There's too much with Bonfin that I think he can give him. He can win those close, like what Nagano couldn't do, win those close, close areas that are around that'll give it to him. Be more active. Yep. You know, maybe grab a takedown at the end of the round. Something stupid. You know what I mean? But I think this fight is like should be lined more 
like minus 160. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't know where they're getting this because he's got a zero. Because he has an O. I'm not going near this from a betting perspective, but he's right. If you guys wanted to do like a point one zero unit or a quarter unit on Dalby just to see what happens, I got no issues with that. Yeah. You know. Next fight in the cars, we got heavyweight matchup, Dante Mays, Rodrigo Nascimento. Mays coming in at a plus one sixty dog. This is a tough fight. It's heavyweights. You know how this goes. You know, to, to me when we have fights like this, the line doesn't mean nothing to me. You know, both both tough guys. Um, you know, I, I don't even know who I like in this fight, you know. I mean, Dante Mays is the better athlete, you know. Um, no, uh, sorry, Nascimento's a better athlete. Dante Mays has got good power, but he's not the smartest guy. doesn't have that cage IQ. I'm going to go Nascimento in this fight, Nascimento, to inside the distance. Yeah, this is a rematch, guys. This is from 2020. This is a rematch. So when these guys originally fought, Nascimento submitted them. So usually I always tell you guys never go back past three to five fights. Unfortunately, these guys never progressed. Like they, yeah. They're kind of just like little fractions. I that, see it ending the same way. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not even going to say anymore. I see, like, nothing really different. Maybe a, a takedown is stuffed here or there or maybe a little situation. But I think Nascimento knows his path to victory. He's going to take him down. He's going to try to sub him. I think it's going to be, you know, part two of part one. So uh, Nascimento bites some mission. Next fan in the car, Chow Barajo. I love this guy, Chow Barajo, by the way, against uh, Maga Madoff. You know, Maga Madoff came off of that loss against Strickland, man. And, uh, you know, Strickland... I'll give him all the credit, man. He didn't have to take that fight, mm -hmm. right? Strickland was up there in the top five. They give him this guy, Maga Madoff, who just got ranked in, in, in the division. He didn't have to take that fight. A lot of guys were avoiding this guy, and they were worried to take him. Strickland's like, I, the money's right. I'll fucking take him. Mm -hmm. And he put him away, um, and, and, and I love that about Strickland. He don't give a fuck. He just wants to fight. He don't care who the names are. You know, put this guy back in his place. So this guy's got to show us a lot here rebounding because he's he's a guy the, the UFC thinks could be a future contender as well. This is a great fight. I like Chow Barajo. When he first came out to the scene, he looked like a mini Paulo Costa. He looks like him. He's got the glasses. He's got the look. He's got the swag. You know, I think this guy's good for the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's got something about him that detached the whole thing. He's crafty. He's got a good all-around game. I like him. He's minus 265. I think Barajo wins this fight, but it's going to be a cl lot closer fight than the line has. Minus What's the line? Minus 265. No way, I think it's a lot closer than that. I think Barajo wins a close decision in this fight. Yeah. And I, I like this guy. You know, the thing it's a good test for him. Magomedov is is a guy where I mean Strickland rolled him, dude. Right now, I was I was shocked by that. But I think I when you when we he's talk, better than that. that he had a bad like, showing. Yeah, he's better than that. this. Is a guy who went to the PFL Championship. Yeah, he had a bad guy. showing. Like he's maybe he was a little nervous. So, you know? Yeah. So when we talk about bounce back spots, like you know Detroit last night in the bounce back spot, like this could be one of those spots where like he looked like complete ass dog shit yeah now he shows up and right now he shows up and all of a sudden now you got a fight on your hands so that's what i'm afraid of i like Barallo. i still don't think he's been thoroughly tested yet you know and if you look at the, some of the guys that he's been he's beat some good guys like petrosian and muradov he's beat some decent guys but he hasn't really been like thoroughly tested yet i think mega madoff is a guy who's bigger for the division he's well-rounded 14 ko six subs Tough guy, and I think that people are undermining him a little bit because of that Strickland performance. That's why he's probably such a dog. It would have been yeah, a little tighter. So it makes me nervous. I'm going to go with Chabral here. I think, like I said, the grappling, there's the pressure, pressure, pressure is probably going to give him the edge here. But this is a tough spot, man. Yeah, it's tough. This is, this it's is, tough. This is a, a tough I, fight I, I, Close play. decision, I think. Yeah, I think this this fight probably goes to the cards. I think so. Close decision, yeah. Chabral for mm -hmm. me. Last fight in the card, Rodolfo Vieira and Petrosian. Ever since Vieira and that Fluffy Hernandez fight, man, I'll never forget that fight, dude. Ever since that fight, man, I'm not a believer in this guy. I don't give a fuck. You know, this is a pick em, you know, on the line here. I, I like Petrosian. I like him a lot in this fight, actually. I'm going to pick Petrosian. I'm going to probably throw a unit on him myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> just like Vieira has, you know, he has all the tools and the elite level grappling, but man, this guy gasses out of nowhere. Steph, I'll never forget that Fluffy Hernandez fight, man. The way he just, it was like middle of the first round and he looked like he was in the middle of round five, dude, and just, just gassed. And, well, it just shows you if you only have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it doesn't matter anymore. And, these, that, and he's as elite as they get. And thank you for saying that because you've been saying that a lot to me the past couple months mm -hmm. that everything has changed where jujitsu is just not enough man yeah. and striking has kind of overtaken yeah. the jujitsu aspect in the ufc and if you don't have a good all-around game you ain't going nowhere. nowhere this guy does not have his pedestrian
pedestrian strike and elite level grappling. Petrosian's a little more well rounded, and I'm gonna take Petrosian to win here. I'm gonna say Petrosian inside the distance. Yeah, ten years ago, if you look at this fight, you're like v v you're, you're picking Vieira all day, all day, all day you're right? This fight, this guy is as elite as they come with grappling. I mean, he's won everything. The guy. You know, I, I mean, he's, they, they call him the black belt hunter. Yeah. I mean, that's how, how well-respected he is. You're in 2023 where people are on to the Brazilian jiu-jitsu game now. It's not like it was back when UFC first came out. They, the reason why they, they even invented the UFC was because the, the, the Gracie family wanted to showcase Brazilian jiu-jitsu to the world to show that it was a great marketing scheme, to show them that, like, our martial art reigns supreme and taekwondo and all these other arts were nothing in the street. We're going to show you what we are. It was new. Everybody went to it. It was so it was shoot fighting, wrestling, and 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 Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That was the, the the honed in things that you needed. You had that. You were going to be good. 2023 now. Every you don't even need to train in a gi anymore. You don't even need a gi anymore. And it proves it right here that you got a guy in Fluffy Hernandez that was a purple belt that submitted one of the most elite of the elite. Mind you, he was gassed out and stuff like that. But that's not our problem. The fact of the matter is he he got submitted. Which was like a minus, like a plus one thousand. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. Now you got a guy in Petrosian who he has really no grappling. He's his takedown defense is meh. On the feet, he's good. If he could stay on the feet, uh, he finds always finds ways back to his feet, which is good. Rodolfo Vieira's conditioning isn't good. You know, we know that he ends up fading down the stretch. So it's like, who do you pick? All fights start on the feet. Every round doesn't matter if you get taken down. Starts on the feet. Mind you, if Rodolfo Vieira takes you down, he's probably submitting you. I'm with you. I think this is the free bet of the of the of the show. Free bet of the show. We'll give you guys one bet every show going forward. Petrosian. We're gonna throw a uh, to win a unit on Petrosian. So, uh, so you're gonna throw one uh, one point one to win one. That's our free bet. Now we go to the Christine Showdown's dog pick of the week. Now nah, hold on before we go. Yeah. Before we go next week, we got the pay per view card. Yeah. All right. Oh, you want to do our pick now? No, no, I just wanted just to have a little light discussion about this. I know you're not a Yuri Push Pushaka fan, all right? Now, we got we got the interim heavyweight champions, Aspinall Pavlovich, which is actually a very good fight, bro. I don't even know who I'm picking in that fight because Pavlovich has been fucking impressive, bro. Yeah. Right? So, this is a really tough fight, man. Aspinall coming off the knee. And, you know what I mean? This is a tough fight. I don't know who I'm picking there. But the, the, this, this year... Yeah, I really don't know. This Yuri Prashaka and Alex Pereira fight really intrigues me, especially after watching Pereira didn't look that good against Jan Blahovich. And you haven't been sold on Yuri Prashaka. And you were you were kind of sold on Alex Pereira until that last Jan Blahovich fight. I'm like, wow, maybe the power... Maybe, he, maybe the power didn't translate that much going up over there. We thought he was going to be still still stronger than everybody else in the light heavyweight division. And, you know, Jan's a strong guy too, but I was like, oh, wow, you know, can the can Pereira really hang with these guys? You know, which I, I don't, I, you know, I'm, this fight's intriguing to me because I've been waiting a year for Yuri to come back. I liked Yuri. You weren't sold on him. So I don't know. What's your early kind of feel on this uh, this fight, man? I, I know when at the end of the day, what do we look at? You look at resume, right? But it's hard for me to look at just his resume when at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, you got to, anything happens in a fight. When you look at Yuri, I mean, when you look at uh, um, Pieta, yeah, there's, there's fights he didn't look good in. You know what I mean? Fights, but that happens. But when you look at Yuri, the sample size that we have of him, like... He Dominic Reyes, he who was already... He technically, I don't care what anyone says, like he was on his way to losing to Glover, too. He, that fifth round, the Glover, that stupid move, he tried to... I mean, so like you could look at the resume and say, yep, he, you know, he beat Glover. But at the end of the day, he was on his way to losing to a 40-year-old guy. Who is it's, it's Glover? But at the end of the day, he was on his way to losing. Then you're talking about a fucking injury, bro. That Dana White claims it was the worst injury that he's ever seen. No tune-up fight. No, no, you don't know what you're gonna get. So like to sit here, I like I gotta really dig into it more. I gotta look into his training. Tough. But it's it's tougher for me to side with him for the mere fact that how did he alter his game? Did he have to alter his game because of the injury? Is he gonna be slower? Is he gonna be in shape? Is he gonna be ready? Is a power gonna be there? Like. Is he going to be concerned that he's going to get injured again? Like, you have no idea what you're getting from this guy. You know what we do know is that we got two strikers. Pereira's coming from kickboxing. I don't know about that anymore. I don't know about I that I know he's anymore. been training with Glover. I, like, like, he might have something in his hat. Yeah, but how long does it take you to train, you know, grappling? Yeah, but I mean, again, again, this guy was a kickboxer his whole life up until a couple years ago. 
No, I know, but I'm saying he's training with Glover for a couple of years now. He's got to have some semblance of, of takedowns and just t- listen. Just be, you don't need Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to get the guy on the ground and get heavy top control. That's where wrestling comes in. I, I get it, but when you've been training yeah. the same way your oh, whole yeah, life, no, instinct kicks in. The instinct yeah. kicks in. You're on the feet, and Yuri's a striker as well. So we're, this is a, a really good battle of the sh- because you know forever per, was when he was fighting Blahovich. He was scared of getting taken down the whole fight. That's maybe why he didn't look that good. He was really worried about getting taken. Who? Pereira, when he fought Blahovich. Yeah. yeah. He was scared yep. to get taken down. Now he's not going to have that worry as much anymore. Yeah. He could actually start striking like he did against Izzy. You know, so this is a this I is tough, man. I, I don't know, bro. Like, I, 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 it's hard for me, to, it's hard for me to, to, to be confident in somebody that I haven't seen in so long coming off a major injury. He technically, at the end of the day, he was outworked. Maybe okay, he won, but he was outworked by a forty-year-old Glover. One mistake, he one one mistake right he there. Was beating he beating him from pillar to post until that mistake. You know what I mean? It's like so. I mean, it was a good fight. But it was I a mean, good fight. But he, like, if it went to the cards, you weren't saying split decision. Glover won that fifth round. He would have won three rounds to two. Yeah, I remember it was two-two going into the fifth. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I got to do a lot of homework on that one. But as of right now, my soft lean. I'm going Pieta. Yeah, that's tough, man. I, I, I'm going to go. And I know Showdown's going to hate me for this and because she's all I'm familiar. I'm going to go soft lean Brosha Perhaka. Okay. I'm going to go soft for now. But, soft but lean answer, here. How can you do that when you you haven't seen him in so long? You, like, it's almost like, hold on, very quick. It's almost like uh, me and you are, 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 are runners. Right and 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 I tear my ACL or I or I snap my ankle or whatever and then in twelve weeks I'm like all right bro I'm ready you're gonna be like I know what his forty time is I know what he runs Mike get out there and do it you're gonna be like you're gonna have confidence that I'm gonna be able to run that forty you know what it is for me too but when it comes to Pereira we haven't seen that much either so but he's active at least he's healthy you saw him knock out Strickland in the first round right that was impressive he knocked him on his ass right he beats Izzy in the first fight right. Izzy wins in the second fight. Izzy, Izzy lost that first round, and he, it was starting to go that way again. He was kicking him to the calf yeah, he yeah. had, and then Izzy did that thing again. So it, it, maybe that win over Izzy wasn't as good because Izzy wasn't. I, I don't know. Like I, I had To me, we haven't seen that much of him either. You know what I mean? So it's a very tricky fucking thing. You know, so, you know what the travesty of that division is? Fucking Rackage, dude. Is, he's not healthy still. Well, he's back in camp, but dude, I wanted to see that. That dude is nasty. Well, let's see when he comes back. Someone's got to take see, the like, reins. Even him coming back. Even him coming. You back. don't know because of the injury. I won't fucking sit there and go Rockic. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Tough. I, I don't know. Someone's got to take control of that division and, and, and reign as champ for three, four. Uh, I think whoever wins this fight will. I think it's gonna be they're gonna it's gonna be a tough ass to beat one. I of hope them. so. You, you know, because you know they're gonna give Jamal Hill a shot again soon because he's been hurt. Yeah, that guy's a bum. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think he's got good hands. Oh, that's all he's got. I like Jamal Hill. Jamal. What does Yuri have? What does Pereira have? They, what are you talking about? You're going to compare Jamal Hills to fucking uh, to Pieta and, 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 and the dynamic ability of Yuri? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I want him to come back. I want Hill to come back because I just want him starched. I'm going to get you but when that happens. I'm telling you right now. Hand tattoos. What are those hand tattoos? I like Jamal Hill. No, what are those hand tattoos? Like the thumbs up like this. On his t- <laughs> Do you see those? Things? Yeah. They look like Mickey Mouse mittens. <laughs> All right, listen, click on the link below. Come to the site. You know what we do. We'll give you the DFS leans, the wagers, podcast. Uh, we do NFL. We do NCAA, college football on Saturdays. But the biggest thing for us, we're combat sports specialists. And we got a great group of guys in our Discord. We watch the fights together. We wager together. We gamble together. We break balls together. So He must have like seven espressos before this show. I actually had four. Hey, the micro- remember the micro machine guy? <laughs> That's what I hey, feel like. Machine. Yeah, well, people, I woke up. I had coffee, espresso. Pre-workout, went to the gym and had another espresso. So I got a lot of caffeine in there. And if you guys want to fucking talk shit to me about the whole boxing thing, go to my Twitter. What is it? Matt, at Mad Lab MMA and come and I'll fucking own your tits. <laughs> See you next week. I'll own your tits.